Hello humans and welcome to this week's Humans in the News. It seems like this week the big story is all about the royals. All manner of accusations passing between the royal family and Meghan and Harry. But I'm not a royalist. I don't see the point of them and frankly I'm baffled at your fascination with a bunch of inbred, overprivileged freeloaders. So I'm going to let Bletin handle it. He really enjoys the primitive stuff. Instead, I'm going to talk about Elon Musk for a change. The latest SpaceX mission was almost successful. So if you're Musk, that means it was a runaway success. Hurrah! Mars, here we come! Now, as a space monkey who is much more sophisticated than you poor primitive creatures, this whole enterprise is both beautiful and alarming. Musk realised that space travel would only be possible if it was sustainable. Rockets are too expensive to be destroyed each time they need to be reused. And that's great, because believe me humans, you have thrown so much rubbish out there into space that it is terrifying. You know when you get really dirty and you have a bath and it leaves a line of scum all around the bath? That's what you've done to the planet with your space junk. A line of scum out there. So while it's hugely concerning to everyone in the galaxy that you're inching closer to really leaving the planet, it's beautiful that you're doing it in a sustainable fashion. I mean, arguably if you'd wrapped your heads around the whole sustainability thing sooner, you wouldn't have to flee this planet in an urgent panic. But hey ho! Anyway, you won't be leaving any time soon. The idea was to have a rocket take off and land. And to be fair, it did. It just blew up afterwards, that's all. I know human tenacity and the fanaticism of a billionaire will help you succeed eventually. I'm just not sure how happy I am about that. Anyway, now over to Bletton for what I'm sure will be an entirely accurate take on the latest crisis to rock the royal family. Away you go, Bletton. Thank you, Zula. Yes, it's great news that Prince Philip is recovering from a successful surgical procedure on his heart. But I'm still not sure why he gets so much attention. After the year your species has had, the death toll, the report that the government's pension costs will be dramatically cut due to COVID deaths hitting the over 65s. Well, okay humans, if you really do want to focus on him. But at the moment, there's plenty of other stuff going on. Apparently, Harry and Meghan are evil bullies. Maybe they should just offer a non-apology the same way Pretty Patel did. Say they're sorry if anyone felt bullied, and then it gets brushed away. Or maybe they should take a leaf from Prince Andrew's book. Do a shameless and arrogant TV interview, then run away from all the accusations of rape and paedophilia. But no, the Harry and Meghan bullying story is far worse. They have done a shameless interview while Harry's grandfather was so gravely ill it's shocking! Uh, except that the interview was recorded before that. Who knew all this TV stuff could be done in advance? So I guess the press will have to cast around for other things to hate them for and be outraged about. I'm sure they'll find something, because they're sure to make it up if they can't. It's just sort of odd that they don't go straight for Prince Andrew, who is implicated in far worse behaviour and actual crimes. Curious. Back to you, Zula. Thanks for leaving your report on such a light note there, Bletin. And now, a message from our sponsor. I have a nutritious, delicious shake two times a day, and then I have a healthy, balanced meal. And I have lost so much weight with this plan. I feel fabulous, and I look great. Uh, I don't, I don't get it. Didn't I look and feel fabulous before? Oh, oh, why not? Oh. So... You decided that people in your society have to conform to a specific view of beauty. Oh, no, 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 my dear, this is not about healthy. Because if it was, that is best achieved through positivity, acceptance, support, and genuine concern for people's well-being. Not through exclusion, mockery, vilification, 
and the perpetuation of harmful, toxic and often unattainable ideals. And I'm sure we can apply that to many of your multi-million pound shallow beauty industries, not just dieting and so-called health. Because people might lose weight with these plans, but I guarantee they will lose a lot more money. Because it's much harder to make money out of happy people. Every ad I see makes me lose faith in your species a bit more. But now it's over to Kure for what we are inconceivably and entirely misleadingly still calling a weather report. Take it away, Kure! Thank you, Zula. Look, humans, I know we all do it. Something fresh and new comes along and you just want to play with it all the time. But this is something you're playing with so much that I think you better slow down and figure out some ground rules before it overthrows what passes for your civilization. You really need to stop turning to AI for everything. Last week I read about how AI was going to help fight crime that involved going through so much data that humans couldn't possibly do it. And the irony was that AI was playing a role in the crime in the first place. Not a day goes by when I don't read a story about AI. AI is being trained to complete video games. AI is being used for job recruitment. AI is being trained on social media posts. I mean, that one committed suicide, people. See, it's already smarter than you. And you humans have a history of doing this, grabbing hold of something new and using it for everything, not realizing until it's too late just how damaging it's been. Wow. You did it with asbestos. You did it with oil. You did it with populist right-wing politics. And it looks like AI is set to play an even bigger and more controversial role in our lives as the debate over AI weaponry heats up. Calls to create a treaty which stops AI from being used in weapons and their deployment has been crushed. Not because it isn't a truly terrifying and risky prospect, but because it's believed not everybody would stick to it. How ironic that your efforts to take each other out could open the door for AI to take you out. I hope you're happy. Back to you, Zula. <sighs> Thanks, Kure. I didn't think you could offer any more sinister or bleak warnings to the humans, but you keep managing to. And now it's time for this week's special mention. And this week's special mention goes to the bees of the UK. As mentioned in a previous edition of Humans, the government had sanctioned the use of a previously banned pesticide. It was banned because it was so harmful to bees. And of course, we all know what pressure bee numbers are under and how dire the consequences are for you humans if you lose such an important pollinator. So victory for bees. The pesticides will not be used. And what brought this about, I hear you ask? Surely it's a no-brainer. It would have harmed the bee population. Tut, tut, humans. You know the government better than that. They don't care a tiny little bit about the bees. It's just that the weather has been so cold, it's killed off the pests that they sanctioned the pesticides for. So I guess everyone's happy, especially the bees. But, as usual, it's not down to carefully considered moral responsibility. No, it's down to dumb luck. That happens a lot with you people. And I'm sure it'll happen next week too, when you can join me for more Humans in the News! <laughs>